This is the BBC. Welcome to the amazing Maya Angelou podcast and the very first audio dramatisation of her autobiographies. They're dramatised by Patricia Cumper and directed by Pauline Harris. These books make up the life and times of Maya Angelou and they're some of the best, most beautiful and haunting pieces of autobiography ever written. We start with the iconic I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings. It's told across five episodes, and here's the first. It's 1931 in the American Deep South, and little Maya and her brother Bailey are sent to live with their grandmother in Arkansas. When I was three, and my brother Bailey four, we arrived wearing tags on our wrists. To whom it may concern, Marguerite Marguerite and Bailey Bailey Johnson Johnson, Jr. Jr. from from Long Long Beach, Beach, California, California, en route to Stamps, Stamps, Arkansas, Arkansas, care of Mrs. Annie Henderson. Years later, I discovered thousands of frightened black children made the journey alone, north to south, back to grandparents. Our parents had decided to put an end to their calamitous marriage, and father shipped us home to his mother. Another day, another morning, Lord. Our father, thank you for letting me see this new day. Thank you that you didn't allow the bed I lay on last night to be my cooling board, nor my blanket, my wine. We lived with Mama. We had soon stopped calling her grandmother and Uncle Willie in the rear of the store. The store! The store! The store! It was always (laughs) spoken of with a capital S, which Mama had owned for some 25 years. Customers could find mash for hogs, corn for chickens, coal oil for lamps, light bulbs for the wealthy, shoestrings, hairdressing, balloons, and flower seeds. Anything not visible had only to be ordered. This house and everybody in it. Thank you in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Marguerite, Bailey, time to wake up. Chores need doing. Each day... After our early chores were done and before school, we were free to play. Bailey was the greatest person in my world, and the fact that he was my brother, and I had no sisters to share him with, was such good fortune that it made me want to live a Christian life to show God I was grateful. Where I was big, elbowy and grating, he was small, graceful and smooth. His hair fell down in black curls, and my head was covered with black steel wool. And yet, he loved me. You let that man hit him in the head with a rolling pin. Who are his head? Who are his head? Of all the needs a lonely child has, the one that must be satisfied is the unshaking need for an unshakable God. My pretty black brother was my kingdom come. (laughs) During the picking season, my grandmother would get out of bed at 4 a.m. to light the coal tar lamp. The wagons would arrive soon after to load on the cotton pickers who had walked miles. The store, being the pickup place that would then take them to the remains of slavery plantations. In these tender mornings, The store was full of workers laughing, joking, boasting, and bragging, with their empty cotton sacks dragging behind them. Sister, I have two cans of sardines. I'm gonna work so fast, I'm gonna make you look like you stand still. In the dying sunlight, the people dragged rather than their empty cotton sacks. The pickers would step back out of the trucks. Dirt disappointed. No matter how much they picked, it wasn't enough. Even my bones is worried today, sister. I swear I picked more than I scale, say. Seven one seven. Seven two's party. Seven three's twenty-one. When Bailey was six, 
and I a year younger. Start again, Bailey. Seven, one, seven. Uncle Willie, he had been crippled as a child. His face pulled down on the left side, and his left hand was only a mite bigger than Bailey's. But on the second mistake or the third hesitation, his big overgrown right hand would catch us by the collar and thrust us towards the dull red stove. We were never burned, but it was close. Annie? Annie? Tell Willie he better lay low. Something wrong, Mr. Stewart? The used-to-be sheriff sat rakishly astraddle his horse. Tell Willie he better lay low tonight. Crazy nigger messed with a white lady today. Some of the boys be coming over here later. Willie, hmm? Ma, Bailey, you heard? We got things to do. Blow them lamps out right now, Willie. Marguerite, you and Bailey empty those potatoes and onions out their bins. Yes, Mama. Yes, Mama. No. <laughs> you gonna hide them, man? He ain't got no choice. Hurry up now. With a tedious and fearful slowness, Uncle Willie gave me his rubber-tipped cane and bent down to get into the now enlarged empty bin. Lay down flat, Willie. Now, cover him as quick as you can. In the darkness, we covered him with potatoes and onions, layer upon layer, like a casserole. Lord, I was asking you in your infinite mercy to spare my son's life. He done suffered enough already. (sighs) He moaned through the whole night, as if, in fact, he had been guilty of some heinous crime. It was fortunate that the boys didn't ride over to the store that evening. They would surely have found Uncle Willie, and just as surely lynched him. Face his arms, necks, legs, and feet. Wash as far as possible, and then wash possible. Yes, Yes, Mama. Mama. (laughs) Thou shalt not be dirty, and thou shalt not be impudent, were the two commandments upon which hung our total salvation. The impudent child was detested by God and a shame to its parents. All adults had to be addressed as Mr., Mrs., Miss, Auntie, Cousin, Uncle, Sister, Brother. Everyone I knew respected these customary laws, except for poor white trash children. Hey, Willie. (laughs) Some families of poor white trash lived on Mama's farmland. Sometimes a gaggle of them came to the store, crawled all over the shelves, twanging all the time in their sharp voices like cigar box guitars. I say, Willie. Calling my my uncle by his first first name. name. Go on. Do as I say and go over there and get me some peanuts. (laughs) Yes, Miss Helen. And to my shame... He followed their orders. Here's sugar, Miss Porter. And here's baking powder. You didn't buy soda last month. You probably been needing some. Mama always directed her statements to the adults. But sometimes, oh, painful sometimes, the grime, snotty-nosed girls would answer her. No, Annie, just give us some extra soda crackers and some more mackerel. <laughs> no, Annie? To Mama? Mama? One summer afternoon, I had just swept the yard of spearmint gum wrappers and Vienna sausage labels. I raked the yellow-red dirt into half-moons so that the design stood out clearly. Mama didn't say anything, but I knew she liked it. She was on the front porch in her big white apron, an apron so stiff with starch it could have stood alone. About the same time... A troop of poor white trash kids marched over the hill. Mama, don't wait for them. Sister, go on inside. Don't wait for them. Come on inside. If they come in the store, you let me wait on them. Inside, Marguerite. I went to stand behind the screen door. One of them lifted her chest, folded her arms... And mocked Mama's strange carriage. Your back's too straight. A mouth ain't pooched out enough. 
it, it's like this. <laughs> Pooch out your mouth more like this. Come on. Out. Through the fly specked screen door, I could see that the arms of Mama's apron jiggled with a vibration of her humming. The tears that had slipped down my dress left unsurprising dark spots. A girl crossed her eyes and put thumbs in her mouth. Look here, Annie. Look here. I wanted to throw a handful of black pepper in their faces to scream that they were dirty, scummy peckerwoods. They all moved back from the porch. I thought they were going to throw a rock at Mama, but then... Take a good look, Annie. She turned her back, bent down, and put her hands flat on the ground. Her dirty bare feet went straight for the sky. Her dress fell down around her shoulders. She had on no drawers. The slick hair made a brown triangle where her legs came together. Just a little while longer Everything will be all right I don't just God, how long Mama really gonna hold out? What they gonna do next? What would Mama really like me to do? Tell me, Lord. Then, they were moving out of the yard. Bye, Annie. Bye, Bye Annie. Bye, Bye Miss Hannah. Bye, Miss Ruth. No, Mama. Bye, Miss they Eloise. Mean nasty. How could Mama call them Miss? The mean, nasty things. What did she prove? Mama opened the screen door to look down on me, crying in rage. Her face was a brown moon that shone on me. She was beautiful. Go wash your face, sister. Yeah. Yes, Mama. Everything. Whatever the contest had been out front of the store, Mama had won. I took my rake to the front yard. The smudged footprints were easy to erase. Come look, Mama. Sister, that's right pretty. Silent night. One Christmas, we received gifts from our mother and father, who lived separately in a heaven called California. I couldn't believe that our mother would laugh and eat oranges in the sunshine without her children. Until that Christmas, I was confident they were both dead. I could cry any time I wanted by picturing my mother. I didn't quite know what she looked like so her features weren't filled in, lying in her coffin with her head on a tiny little white pillow and a sheet over her. Tears would fall down my cheeks like warm milk. Then, this terrible Christmas came. Will they give you Marguerite? Daddy sent his photograph, and Mother sent these. Mm, tea set and a doll. Where you going, sister? Maya, Maya, wait. Bailey, Marguerite, you come back here. I went out to the backyard behind the china berry tree. <laughs> The day was cold, and the air as clear as water. Why did they send us away, Bailey? What did we do so wrong? I don't know. I just don't know. Bailey and I tore the stuffing out of the doll, but he warned me that I had to keep the tea set in good condition. Why should I? Maybe Mother's getting ready to come and get us. Maybe... She'd just been angry at something we'd done. But she forgiven us now? Maybe. Any day or not, she might just come right enough. Do you really think so, Bailey? Maybe. The narrator Maya was played by Adjoa Ando, Maya as a Child by Indy Jedsal, Bailey was Roshorn Hewitt, and Mama Cecilia Noble. Uncle Willie was Richard Peppel, Steward John Lightbody, and the girl Francesca Elise. In the next episode, Maya's life changes dramatically. 
In celebration of Maya Angelou, Radio 4 has teamed up with the award-winning Aardman to create an animation which tells the story of an incredible life lived at breakneck speed. To watch it, look for the Maya Angelou autobiographies on the Radio 4 website.